from her poverty. And so God today calls us, even from our poverty, to be very generous givers. Because the best way to overcome a dried up life or poverty in our life is to uh, just give away our whole being. And then we'll increase our whole being. That's the whole paradox of being a good Catholic, of being a good Christian, of being a follower, a good steward of Jesus, to follow Jesus as a disciple. So to increase our being, we give away. A lot of people think, well, I would, but I have nothing to give. That's when God wants us to give the most. So we have the story of two widows. One is about to die. She's so poor that uh, she's about to make one last piece of bread, and her and her son are just going to lay down and die. It's that desperate. And then this prophet comes along, Elijah, one of the greatest, maybe the greatest prophet in the whole Old Testament. He comes along because he had just confronted Ahab, and Ahab wouldn't repent of his idolatry, and so he said there's going to be a famine on the whole land. That's why the woman was so poor, because there was a famine. And whenever uh, we turn away from God in any way, when we're not open to God in every way, our lives experience that famine. Our, our whole spirituality just dries up. Our lives dry up. And so that's why the land dried up, not because God was mad at Ahab and wanted to teach him a lesson because he was, you know, like a little child going to, you know, take revenge on Ahab. It wasn't that at all. It's, it's prophetic action. In the prophetic action, the land dried up because they turned away from God. And so the way... Uh, so. Elijah runs away, and he's got nothing to eat. He's ready to die himself, and God says, don't worry, just trust me. And so Elijah had to trust God. He had to put all his trust in God, and crows came and fed him. And God said, go down to the wadi, which would have been all dried up. And so he, he was able to drink some water out of this little river uh, called the wadi. And uh, so God says, here's what you got to do, man. You got no food. You got to go to this foreign town and this woman's going to take care of you, this widow, this poor widow. So he tells Ahab to leave his comfort zone, to leave his own country. It's hard to leave your own country and go to another country. So he has to leave his own country, go to another one, and just trust God that God is in all this. So we have to sometimes just leave our comfort zones. That's what God wants us to do and say, hey, listen, don't just give in your comfort zones. Give out of your poverty. Don't just trust God in your comfort zones. Trust God out of your dryness, out of your poverty. So he goes to this foreign town, leaving his own country, his own comfort zone, and uh, he encounters a woman, and she's, she's ready to die. And so he says what God tells him. He says, well, get me a cake. And she says, I don't have it. I just got a little flour. I'm going to go make a fire and put the oil and flour together, eat it, and just lay down and die. And so... Uh, Elijah, this is great. He says, yeah, go ahead and do that. But first, make me a cake. <laughs> it's like the woman. What would you have said to a guy like that? <laughs> Didn't you hear me? I have nothing. Uh, you know, I have nothing left. And, uh, but she really says, you know what? Your oil won't run out and your flour won't run out. And uh, she trusts God that the prophet's word was true. And today God wants you to trust that the prophet's word is true. When you become this person that Elijah asked the woman to be, when you give even out of your poverty, when you feel like you have no time and you give some time, you feel like you have no money and you give to someone else who's in need, when you feel like you have just no resources and you just keep giving, giving, you increase your capacity. You increase your whole being. And so what God wants you to hear today is, listen, uh, that jar of flour, it's not going to run out. God wants you to know that. that. That jar of oil, it's not going to run out. God's going to provide for you and provide for you and provide for you all along the way while you experience this famine, while you experience this this poverty in whatever part of your life where you feel you have poverty. Sometimes it's in relationships, and sometimes it's in just your relationship with God or your spirituality. But we all get a dryness. We all get a poverty in our lives. And the way out of it is give, give, give. I remember once when I was a kid, uh, a teenager, 
old, uh, you know, in high school, I played football, I loved football, and uh, I remember we would practice so hard and run so hard, I had nothing left to give. It's like, coach, I got nothing. And uh, he's like, okay, you guys have nothing left. You're all burnt out. You're all used up. We're going to run one more sprint, just one more, just to really gut it out, 40-yard sprints. And so we're like, all right, one more. We'll, we'll do our best. So we give our very best on that last sprint because uh, we got nothing left. And when we're done with it, you know what he did? That liar. <laughs> he said, well, one more. Let's do one more. I'm like, ah. Oh. And we would keep giving our best because there was just one more. Ten sprints later, he's like, all right, really, really, this is the last one. One more. Give your all on this. You know what he was doing? He was increasing our being. He was increasing our ability to play the game. He knew that when we had nothing to give, when we give at that point, that's when we become so much better And that means we're going to be able to play to the last two minutes in the game and still show up and still give our best. And that's what God does. When we feel like we have nothing and we keep giving, we increase our being. We grow and we become spiritually much bigger, much better, uh, ready for all God has put us here to do. And God has put us here to do things. God has put us here to give. God has put us here to serve. God has put us here to love. God has put us here to be light. God has not put us here to just devour, to just consume. Absolutely what God has not put us here to do. God has us here for a reason. Once when we were, we weren't poor, Cindy and I, we were broke. (laughs) We were here at Redeemer. We had come, so it was in the last 12 years. I can't remember when it was. But I remember we were just broke. And it was month after month after month, we were broke. And we're talking about it several months in. And uh, and then Cindy just looked up and said, I'm still tithing, you know. And I'm like, God love you. That's the last thing on my mind. I'm a priest. I wouldn't have even thought of it. I was just trying to pay some bills. And she's like, I'm still tithing, you know. And I'm like, oh. You're the best wife ever. She makes me better in every way. Uh, I tell you what, she made me a better son visiting my mom. We called my sisters this last couple of weeks, both of them. Oh, it's always Cindy saying, go visit your mom. It's always Cindy saying, let's call your sister. And it's always Cindy saying, I'm still tithing, you know. And I'm like, wow, that is so beautiful. So anyways, um, I was talking to uh, Daniel today, and we we're talking about uh, Dave Bennett. He's one of our parishioners. Just a beautiful man and his beautiful wife, Carrie, and their family. It's just, just the best, be beautiful. And uh, so um, Dave was telling us a story. He said he was going to try to tithe because we had called, the, you know, the school families to do this. And he said, but we had just, it was a bad economy. Remember the bad economy? And uh, we took like a 15, 20% pay cut. And that we decided that we wouldn't tithe. We would pay this amount. And he said, and we committed to that but we weren't ready to just give uh, and trust God. We couldn't trust God, you know, and tithe at the same time. And so uh, he said, you know what happened, Father? He said, God reduced my income by 50%. And so now my income and my tithe, I was tithing 10%. <laughs> I, I had given less than I wanted to, but by Reducing my income by 50%, now I was tithing to the full 10%, and we decided we're not going to give less anymore. We're going to keep tithing that amount, so it'll be 10%, and we're trusting God. He says, that was the most grace-filled time of my life, and our life as a family. He said, our whole family grew by leaps and bounds, and the grace in us, and, and just in every good way. He says, I would never want to go through that experience again. But, I would never want to take it out of my life either. I, I'm so glad I went through that experience. It was so hard. It was so hard, but we gave out of our poverty, and God blessed us beyond measure. Uh, there's uh, one last story I think I might tell you. Uh, John Paul II, or 22nd, no, John Paul, John, 
John the 23rd. John the 23rd. I can't get John Paul this uh, out of my mind. So uh, John the 23rd grew up in Italy, and they were so poor that all they did was just eat a little soup, a little broth, you know, put some vegetables in a big, huge pot full of water. The more water, the more you can eat. And, uh, and so he said, whenever a drifter, a hobo, someone just going through the land it was, came to our door and begged, she always brought him in, set him at the table, put more water in the pot uh, so they could eat too. And uh, she said, we just always fed everyone. We gave out of our poverty. She said, I learned, he said, I learned more from my mom than anyone. And look how God truly blessed her. You know, he, uh, he didn't just become a priest or a cardinal. He became the pope of the whole church. Uh, this mom, who was like the widows, who had no food to give her kids, yeah, uh, when a hobo came to the door, she just put more water in the pot and gave out of her poverty. That increased their being so much that the spirituality of that family uh, became the leaders of the Catholic Church. Uh, so many other uh, wonderful examples of this, but you know it to be true. You know that what God calls us to do just all the time is just give of ourselves. If you're feeling dry, if you're feeling the famine, if you're feeling uh, the poverty, what's the answer? Just give out of that poverty and watch God increase your being. Yeah, this is why we're here. This is it. If you wondered why you're here, what it's all about, this is it. You're here to serve. You're here to love. You're here to be this beautiful light, this beautiful love, and you're here to give. That's our Catholic faith. That's what it's all about. And what a wonderful challenge and what a wonderful faith we have.